For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to spend a few minutes kind of reviewing or summarizing um, our progress that we've made as we finish week four. We're working towards our final draft, trying to complete our literature review by March 5th. Basically have two more weeks to uh, finish up our, our final draft. But so far in the process here, I want to talk about three ma main points that, uh, that we've been really addressing here so far uh, in this course. I want to talk about working in our shared Word online document. I want to talk about specific steps that you might want to consider when you're developing your literature review. And uh, number three, just to review and remind you uh, the new way that we're going to deal with weekly reflections for the course. So the first point I want to make, um, I want to talk about working in our Word Online document. I want to remind everyone to try to work as much as possible in our shared Word Online document so that we have evidence of your progress. We have evidence of, of uh, any feedback that you're requesting and comments that I make as I am leaving comments as you're requesting feedback, leaving comments in the Word document. As you know, Microsoft Word shares or saves all of the revisions. Every time there's a change in the document, there is a new revision. So if for any reason you need to revert back to a prior revision, you can simply do so by selecting the ellipsis here, just to the right of your document, and selecting version history. So you'll notice that uh, you can easily access the versions. And some of you are going in quite often and uh, in some cases have 40 to 50, over 60, in some cases over 60 versions of the same document. So again, this is just a way to provide evidence that you are making progress. I know sometimes maybe in some cases there are issues with connectivity. Maybe you have problems accessing the internet. In those cases, I would try to get in the habit of uploading your text, your changes to your text, at least on a weekly basis. So again, I can easily access your progress. I can see what kind of uh, things you're working on. And again, if you need uh, you know, assistance, you need feedback, you can request that by leaving a comment in the Word document. I think what concerns me the most are those cases where there are few, if if any, changes to the document. So make sure that you're reaching out and asking questions if you have um, issues about you know, developing the text or just accessing the document. Um, but again, this can only help you having this evidence in Microsoft Word. I take into consideration uh, the, the progress or the process of writing as, as much as the end product. So it can only help you to have that evidence, to have those revisions appear in Microsoft Word. It can only be to your benefit um, having and making frequent changes to your Word online document. I understand at this point as we continue or complete week four that may, there might be cases where you have comments to yourself. It might even appear a little bit messy as far as uh, how the text is laid out. And I completely understand that. And I even expect that. So it's not a problem if you're leaving comments to yourself in Microsoft Word. If you're creating an outline, of course, and working from that, I'm encouraging you to find that process that works best for you um, and not worry about cleaning it up at this point. Now, as we get closer to March 5th and we get closer to our due date, then uh, little by little, I'll be expecting that you're removing uh, the comments and uh, you're removing any uh, extraneous information from your document. Talking about extraneous information, I would go ahead and remove any of the text that was included in the original um, template. I included a lot of text as you were entering into the template for the first time. Uh, this text was meant to provide a guide as to how to complete each of the sections of your thesis paper. If you find that information helpful, I would copy and paste it perhaps over to another document and leave it um, uh, separate and refer to it as you need to as you're developing your your uh, thesis. But at this point, I would go ahead and move that and uh, just leave the text that uh, is part of your own um, your own document. 
All right, so uh, going back to our main points here. So working in Word is the main thing. Um, the first thing I wanted to share with you. Uh, the second point I want to make is uh, describing some of the key steps that I would follow in developing your literature review. The first being your thesis statement. So most of you at this point have copy and pasted your thesis statement or you're working on a thesis statement within your Word document. So I would do that first. I would also include research questions at the end of your thesis, uh, at the end of your literature review, just before the method section. That includes the key questions that are uh, what you're going to be pursuing when you start to collect your own data. The reason for this is as you're developing your theory, I want you to think very closely about the research questions that you're considering. The thesis statement is basically your one sentence answer to those research questions. Essentially, developing the rest of your literature review is the extended answer to those research questions. What we need to do while we're developing our ideas uh, of our literature review is also to consider what we're going to be, uh, what you're going to be collecting, the data that you're going to be analyzing the questions that you're going to be answering, we want to make sure that we're addressing those same related concepts in our theory. We don't want to develop a theory or some concepts in our theory that go beyond the scope of our own research. So I think it's easier to consider that as you're developing your, um, developing your theory. Also keeping into consideration the types of participants you're likely to use when you start your own research. We're going to begin collecting our own data for our research March 8th. So make sure you're reaching out to those participants and confirming their participation as much as possible, getting the necessary permissions as needed. Many of you have been sending documents to me to sign, and um, that's, I think, going to be helpful for you so that when you complete your literature review, you're going to be assured as much as possible, that you're going to have participants who are willing and able to help you collect the data that you need for your research questions. So uh, try to keep that in mind. Remember that uh, the theory needs to align directly with the research that you're going to be pursuing uh, later on. So the research questions that are going to appear at the end are going to be part of a transitional paragraph. And I've included in the show notes here, I've included a, a link to the page in Notion that describes in greater detail that paragraph. But for now, at least uh, make sure that you have those research questions and you're referring to them periodically as you develop your ideas. Now, the next point, make sure to add two to four main sections or level two headings and any necessary subsections as level three headings. So level three headings or your subsections are only necessary if you only have two main sections in your literature review. If you have three or four main sections, it's not necessary to include a subsection for those main sections. Okay, so it's not necessary to include level three headings unless, again, you only have two main sections. Something very important here when uh, thinking about your, your headings and your thesis statement. The key points listed at the end of your thesis statement should be either explicitly stated in the main sections, okay, that's one way, or they need to be clearly evident in any subsection headings or topic sentences. They need to be evident. They need to be discussed, uh, whether it's uh, in subsections or it's stated clearly in the topic sentences, the first sentence of each of your body paragraphs. You essentially have two ways to organize these key points. But the main point that I want to make is that those key points are essentially your literature review. The key points that you're mentioning in your thesis statement are going to be the main points that you're going to develop in greater detail throughout the rest of your theory. Now, this is one of the reasons why I'm suggesting in many cases not to organize your main sections from the general to the specific or the theoretical to the practical. Why is that? Because usually the key points of your theory 
are only being addressed at the end of your theory, where maybe you're talking more about the practical aspects, or um, you know maybe you're talking you know if you're going from the theoretical to the practical, you're talking about the um, the the what, the how, the when, the where, the why at the very end of your document. Instead of what I'm suggesting, what I'm encouraging you to do is to try to address those key points throughout the entire theory. This is another reason why I also suggest that you try to avoid sections that only define terms. It's for the same reason. Try to avoid talking too much about the what when you're defining words. You're essentially only talking about the what, but... Instead, define your terms within your discussion of the how and the why and the when and the where and the with whom and so on. Think of bringing those question words together collectively on a point-by-point -point basis. And if you do that, then I feel that your theory is going to be more relevant to your own study. When you're doing research, you're typically answering the question how or why, perhaps maybe when right? But not so much about just the what, okay? Of course, you're talking about certain definitions. You'll be looking at uh, the what of certain aspects of your study, but you're really setting out to answer the questions why in many cases and how in many cases. All right, the next point. To conclude your sentence outline, add only your topic sentence, the first sentence of each body paragraph, under each of the sections or subsections. This is going to complete your sentence outline. This is going to force us to look at how specific, right, and how clear our topic sentences are. One of the hardest things to do when you're developing a body paragraph is to develop a topic sentence. Sometimes we're able to develop it very clearly from the beginning and, and, go and add supporting sentences to align to the topic sentence. Sometimes we have to finish a paragraph before we can go back and really make final decisions about uh, developing a topic sentence that reflects the main idea of the entire paragraph. Either way, at the end of the day, those two need to align, the topic sentence and the supporting sentences. But at this point, when we're developing our sentence outline, we need to look very clearly at the topic sentences to check the logic can we get the gist of what you want to say simply by looking at the topic sentences only? Are our topic sentences aligned directly to the subsections or the sections of, of our literature review? So it really helps us to not only check the soundness of the topic sentences, but it also assures us that the topic sentences, or later the body paragraphs, are directly aligned logically within each of our sections. Now, at this point, when you finish the sentence outline, this might be a good point, a good time to ask for feedback if you want or you're not sure about your organization. Sometimes students will ask for feedback after only having completed a thesis statement. Sometimes they will ask for feedback only after having a thesis statement in the main sections. But ideally, um, the the uh, way that I can provide the best feedback is being able to see both or all three, the thesis statement, the sections or subsections, and also the topic sentences. So I can see at a glance the overall structure of your ideas. Okay, moving on. Once we have completed our sentence outline, I would recommend that you look at the research matrix. I've included some templates in Microsoft Teams. Each one of you can take one of those templates and um, modify it, change the name of the file to your name and going into uh, the matrix, bringing over the topic sentences from your sentence outline, bringing it over the main sections from your Word document to the matrix. And this, I think, is a, a good way to organize your citations, being able to assure that you have support for each of your topic sentences that you've included in your outline. Once you are satisfied with the, um, the evidence and you have plenty of support for each of your topic sentences, then you can begin developing the rest of your paragraphs. But this research matrix really helps, I think, 
make sure at the beginning, even before you start to spend a lot of time on developing the rest of your text, that you have the, the, um, the support, you have the citations, that you have found the articles that you'll need throughout your entire paper. Right? And otherwise, if you begin developing the rest of your paragraphs, you might have a couple at the end that you still don't have support. And then you need you'll you may need to change completely the idea of the paragraph. And then you have to ask, well, does this paragraph even go in this section if you're making those kinds of changes? And it just becomes much more difficult making those decisions at the very end instead of finding out f first which, settings or which uh, uh, citations, I should say, support your topic sentences and making sure that the topic sentence that you've chosen has support and making those decisions before you really get into the body paragraphs. But once you finish the research matrix and you're assured that you have the support for all of your topic sentences, then go back to your Word document and begin developing the rest of the paragraphs. Now, many will ask for feedback after they complete maybe the first body paragraph, they've, they've completed the, the topic or the sentence outline. They go in to begin developing that first body paragraph, and you can choose you know, any section. You can basically choose any body paragraph. I would, I would choose the easiest to begin with. But um, choose the, uh, the body paragraph that you think you can complete the, that's the easiest, that's the quickest for you to, to accomplish. And when you're developing that first body paragraph, I would first start looking at the literature review guide. Take a look at that page and also the meal plan. These two pages contain a lot of information that includes really most of the information that I, um, or the comments that I usually make when I provide feedback. I would say 80 to 90% of the feedback that I provide are listed or included in these two pages. So again, check out the literature review guide in Notion and also the meal plan. Now, as you're reviewing those pages and you're developing your first body paragraph, right? And you have completed that body paragraph based on the information that I've included in those pages. Then you might want to ask for feedback. If you feel you need some feedback to um, reinforce what you have completed in that first example there and before you begin with the rest, then you might ask for a feedback at that point. All right, so we've developed our first body paragraph. We've received feedback. We feel like we have a, a handle on developing our body paragraphs. Then you can go on to continue the rest of your, your uh, paragraphs. I would recommend that you visit the following sites in Notion. Number one, Visit the site called Organizing Your Argument. I would review that uh, page if you maybe you have uh, maybe you looked at it a couple of weeks ago. Um, I would take another look at it. I would take a look at narrowing down your topic. I think it wouldn't hurt to take a look at that, and also the page called Reasoning Patterns. I think those three are most relevant when developing your body paragraphs. When you've completed all of your body paragraphs, then I would look at your introductory paragraph and your transitional paragraph. Again, I've included two pages or links to the two pages here in Notion that you might find useful. You might want to take a look at uh, what you need to include for both of those to complete the, uh, the literature review. Again, I think it's always best to leave the introductory paragraph and the transitional paragraph towards the end. All right, the final point, weekly reflections, just to review. Uh, I've included uh, links in the uh, show notes here where you can access the video where I explain how we're going to go forward in our weekly reflections. We had some issues with Notion using the calendar, which we will no longer be using. So take a look if you haven't already at this video. And I've also included the link to the roster, the thesis seminar roster for all of you where each of you should have your own dedicated page where you'll be including your reflections. Now, the last thing I want to talk about uh, really are three suggestions when seeking for, uh, feedback. As we're getting closer to the due date, um, I think if you follow these three recommendations, I think we can get the most out of uh, our 
your, your feedback or the feedback that I provide you um, as we finish our literature review. So number one, make sure that you clean up the Word document before requesting feedback. What I mean by this is when you are asking for feedback, I would remove any comments that relate to text that you've already changed. So if you have really no questions or there's really nothing more pending to in, in with respect to, to that particular piece of your text, then go ahead and remove the comments. Um, you can certainly leave any comments that are pending that maybe they're notes towards yourself or to yourself. Maybe they're comments that I've left that you're still working on uh, that particular uh, part of the text. Feel free to leave those. Feel free to highlight text and leave that if that's, um, you know, if that help is helpful for you. Um, but as we get closer to the, the deadline of March 5th, I'll ask that you uh, gradually remove the highlighted text or the notes to yourself so that when we finish that complete text, there are no comments, nothing highlighted, only the text itself as it relates to your literature review. Now, the second point I want to mention here, review any relevant pages in Notion that relate to what you are asking about. What I mean here is a lot of times I'm asking you to refer to certain pages as you're developing the text. So if you have questions about your own text, include questions also about what I mentioned in Notion. If you, and an example would be, let's say if I um, am mentioning some words to avoid, right? And you're not sure if the example that you have is an, an example of what I'm talking about in Notion, you can, re you can reference what I st stated in Notion and also ask, you know, your question about your text. Okay, so you could say, well, I, I, meant, I use this kind of transition. I'm not sure if it's the right transition where you mentioned here we, shouldn't, we should use these types of transitions. Um, sometimes that helps, um, helps me to see whether or not the information that I'm including in these pages is, uh, is, is, is helpful. Maybe I can also find ways to clarify what I say or what I mention in the Notion pages itself. So feel free to also include or reference any information that I provided in Notion as it relates to your own text. Now, the third piece of advice I would ask that you consider regarding feedback is uh, determine if the comments in Word are sufficient. Okay, so many of your doubts or your questions, I can address leaving comments and answering your comments within the Microsoft Word document. But you, there might be some serious concerns that you have where maybe a conversation is needed. So make sure you're reaching out to me and asking to schedule time outside of our tutoring sessions. If you have serious concerns, you're really not sure what to do next, what, what comes next in the process. And um, if you're really just feeling lost, then we need to uh, discuss those, those issues, those situations, so that we can move forward. All right, so just a quick recap uh, of thesis seminar as we are completing our fourth week of the semester, our fourth week finishing our uh, literature review. Again, our due date's gonna be March 5th, 2021. We've got essentially two more weeks um, to, to complete our literature review. And again, make sure that you're reaching out if you have any questions and you're posting questions or comments in your Word document. Again, I encourage everyone to use the Microsoft Word document as often as possible so that we have that evidence um, that will be helpful, especially when evaluating the process of completing your thesis.